Hello, I'm Aaron from Solace, and I've made an event-driven WebSocket demo. Check it out. I call it entanglement. Want to try it? Check it out. Now, if you want to try the demo first and get the explanation for it later, then go to your laptop, go to your desktop, open up a browser and type in sg.solace.com slash QR. And then pause this video and come back later to find out how it works, okay? All right, so that's going to load up a web page which has a bunch of JavaScript in it, and that's going to initiate a WebSocket connection up into Solace Cloud. Now, I could have used Solace's native SMF, we have a fully featured JavaScript API. I've used it for other WebSocket demos before. But since Solace is a multi-protocol event broker, I thought I would use MQTT, an open, standard, lightweight, publish-subscribe, bi-directional protocol for devices, event-driven microservice architectures, and streaming data to third parties. But I don't just initiate one WebSocket connection, I actually connect to multiple Solace brokers. There's one in the UK, one in the US, and one here in Singapore a distributed event mesh. And on each of those connections, I add a topic subscription to a timing topic with unique identifier, and I publish and subscribe 10 messages to myself. Why? To count the round trip time. I'm looking at the latency. I wanna pick the broker that's closest to me, not for any functional reason, but just because it helps the demo run a little bit more smoothly. So benchmarking is done. I have my broker of choice, Singapore in this case. I tear down those other connections and I'm ready to get on with the rest of the demo. Next, I add a new topic subscription on that connection to a special mesh ID. I generate this mesh ID and I subscribe to it. And with that, I build a QR code that has the URL of the demo and that mesh ID embedded in it so that when I come along with my phone and I scan it with the QR code app, it knows where to connect to and it knows which topic to subscribe to, that mesh ID topic to subscribe to. So now is when the real-time nature of JavaScript comes in. JavaScript is event-driven by design. Everything runs in an event loop. There is no blocking. And because it's primarily used for GUIs, there's all sorts of ways to interact with it. You can add event handlers for, for touch, for swipe, uh, for orientation via the accelerometer data. And you specify callback handlers or event handlers when these events occur. So all I had to do was publish messages inside those event handlers. So when you touch the device, I publish messages that contain that orientation or rotation data as the payload. And since both demo instances are subscribed to that same mesh ID topic, they both get a copy and they are entangled. They are synced and you can kind of see the cube rotating on both of them. Now you can entangle more than two devices, right? And because this is publish subscribe, you can just add more subscribers. Uh, here is a demo. Here's me running it with five instances at the same time. I've never actually tried to max it out, so I don't know exactly how many you can do. Try it with your friends. Try it with your colleagues. You know, share the QR code link over a Zoom call, maybe. Um, there's a little latency display and a message counter down in the bottom corner, so you can actually see what's going on under the covers. Now, the source code for the demo is available on GitHub. It's at github.com slash solidslabs. Uh, I hope you find the demo cool. Just think how much more reactive and responsive your customer applications or your microservice architectures could be if you're using a streaming bi-directional protocol like WebSockets rather than plain old REST. Anyway, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Come find us on Solace Community where we love to talk about Solace, event-driven architectures, and, you know, uh, wacky demos. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.